Hi, Karen here. Welcome back to our house. Or if you're new here, welcome. Please consider subscribing to learn more about the Robinson curriculum. This is all things RC. And I thought this would be a really fun series to kick off going through the entire RC book list. Now, obviously it's a very long list. This is K through 12 right here. So maybe 10 books in each video. I think that would be really fun to go over the authors, the time period they were written in, a little, you know, kind of fun facts about them, and maybe even read you a little sample from each one. So you really get a feel of how special this book list is and the vocabulary, all of it. I'm really excited about it. So let's just jump right in. All right, so really quickly for those not familiar with RC, it is a curriculum that's made up of this wonderful book list from books one, zero to 157. Once they read all these books and complete all the Saxon math textbooks that are outlined in the curriculum as well as the science texts and improve on their writing, they write every single day, then they are considered a well-educated person. Their K through 12 education is complete. So with that being said, book zero is actually the King James Bible. Now this does not mean that when your child learns how to first read five, six years old, you're having them read the entire King James Bible before they move on to book number one. This is kind of symbolic, but it's foundational. The backbone to the curriculum is the King James Bible, which I highly appreciate, especially being a King James only as myself. So this, I love this. Now, the way our family approaches this, and maybe this could be a tip for you, is we do have a goal for our kids to read the Bible cover to cover every year. But, you know, we don't just unload the card or make every, like a five-year-old do that. It's a progression. So we are big fans of the one-year Bible. There's a KJV one-year Bible. And so how we approach this is, Let's say the first year that they're reading, they can just read the Proverbs because every day there's an Old Testament, New Testament, Psalm, and Proverb of the day. So maybe when they just start out, they just read the Proverb of the day. And then as they become more fluent readers, they're reading the Psalms and the Proverb. And then as they get older, they're reading the New Testament, Psalm, Proverb, until I say around for us, maybe it's age between 10 to 13 where they're reading the whole portion, old, new, Psalms and Proverbs. They do this each year on their own time and that is how we cover that book zero. And like I mentioned, it starts off very simple. Book one is the McGuffey's Primer, which I'll go over in just a second. All the way to the very last book is De Bello Gallico by Julius Caesar. So you can see this is one of the books towards the end, but this is a Washington Irving biography of George Washington. So yeah, it's going to progress naturally though throughout this list, which I really appreciate. So book number one is the McGuffey's Primer. So I have this one here. Actually with the original set have two. I'm not sure why there's two primers, but here we go. I just have them read this one obviously first and then the second. Primer. Now, for those of you not familiar with the McGuffey readers, this was it in the country from mid 19th century to mid 20th century. There were no prior to that textbooks in the schoolhouse, right? Kids would just bring in whatever books they had from home. Primarily, it was the Bible. Uh, that's all they had. So these were the first real textbooks. And, you know, Mr. McGuffey, he worked tireless tirelessly. He worked 11 hour days, six days a week. He would go from frontier school to frontier school, mainly in Kentucky. Um, and he created a really wonderful set of readers. I personally love these. I love my kids reading to me these stories. I love reading it to them. And they have a lot of, it's very much focused on morals and God and the Bible. Now, little note here, they did come out with a revised version after that, which Mr. McGuffey, did not consent to, he did not work on it. That's totally different. They used his name, but he was not involved in it. And in those revised readers, they took out a lot of mentions of God and the Bible, and they try to make it more secular to appease the masses. So keep that in mind. If you're looking for a set of the McGuffey readers, try if you can to get the originals versus the revised versions unless that's what you're looking for is the revised version. So with the primer here, it starts super simple, just sentences, words, and then it goes on to short little stories with vocabulary. So this is the story about the swan. It has a long neck and short legs. It is as white as snow. The food of the swan is the same as the food of the goose. Swans make their nests of short sticks and grass. Their eggs are large and white. They hatch in two months. Did you ever see a young swan the swan, the young swan is not white, but it is gray. So that is an excerpt here 
of one of the first lessons. Again, this is the first book that they read. And so moving on, book number two is the McGuffey's first reader. So that's a really nice progression. The stories just get a little bit longer. There's still some vocabulary words at the end, but really you're not supposed to do anything more than just letting them read through the books. So here's an example once they're getting close to the end of the book here. But he was told by his parents that he had sinned, not only against them, but against God. The humble child went to God in penitence and in prayer. He made a full confession of all to his parents and obtained their forgiveness. And it was not till then that peace of mind was restored. I'm a huge fan of these stories. Some of them, some parents might think, wow, that's a little strong, right? Like don't take strong drink and the whiskey boy and talks about a boy that died from drinking whiskey and everything. But I think this is great to get them when they're early and explain to them the real consequences of sin because they're bombarded in this world with contradictory messages, you know, just social drinking and this and that and the commercials. So the sooner you can have them read themselves and reading together real stories, real consequences of what these kinds of things do in a person's life, I think the better. So I'm glad that those kinds of stories are in the McGuffey readers. So book number three is Nursery Rhymes by various authors. I don't have a lot of backstory information. It's just that it's kind of an old fashioned rhyme, um, nursery rhymes book. A lot of the popular ones like Humpty Dumpty, Hot Cross Buns, but there's also some other ones that you might not be familiar with oranges and lemons, the man in the moon. And I did this self-published with Lulu. I'll link it in a video so you can see. I have the dedication here that I did for my children in the back. And I just got this clip art up from Canva, just really simple. I took the file from RC and just ran it through Lulu and created the book. So if you have RC, if you bought it, you can do that as well. Super simple, I think it was like five bucks to make. And I like how it's nice and big because at that age, you know, there's still working on reading, they're new readers. So it's nice to have a nice big book, nice big font. Now, something that I think is very, very special with the RC book list is the balance that it has. You will see that it goes from kind of fun literature for kids fiction to history, geography books. And I love that they included a nursery rhyme book, especially in the beginning, because it's so important to teach kids nursery rhymes. I believe it's Einstein that someone asked him, you know, what should I do to help my child be as smart as they can be or whatever? And he said, go home and read them fairy tales. And when you're done, read them some more fairy tales. And I just recently also read a book, I finished it about, uh, it's called Reading Magic, The Importance of Teaching Kids, again, nursery rhymes. There's so many benefits to it. It's a whole other video in and of itself, but just the rhyming sequence, it helps them kind of intuitively know what the next word is at the end reading nursery rhymes, memorizing them. It's so important to making it part of your childhood and just for development. So I know, I think it's something that we're just kind of losing today. A lot of kids are going into school not knowing any nursery rhymes. Their parents didn't teach them any. It's not the most popular thing today on cartoons or whatever it is, you know, kids are watching. So if you can, you know, make sure you're going over these with your kids and at least you know you're covered with the RC book list because that's one of the first books. All right, book number four is The Life of George Washington by Josephine Pollard. Josephine Pollard was a really special lady. She was an American hymn writer. She wrote several hymns and children's stories and her style, I think it's uh, pretty famous for writing in one syllable words. And so as of lately, there's been a resurgence in the popularity of her books. Maybe it's because of programs like RC or other kind of old fashioned curriculums, but her books are becoming popular again. So you can find reprints on Amazon, but you can also find still books like this online. Now, when you buy the Robinson curriculum, you get all the files. So you can make your own books, which I have lots of tutorials on that. I have a book binding series, so you can make your own. Now I have done that for, you know, several years, but I have six kids. So as they go down the list, they get a little bit more and more beat up. And I personally, my preference is I just like buying books. I like having the hard copies and I'm working on collecting all the books on the RC book list. So I tend to favor having a physical copy like this. With that being said, I want to make videos and show you what are the good reprints and the bad reprints and options because a lot of these books, let's face it, they're getting old. And so if you buy the originals like I have, they're kind of falling apart. So let's talk about also different bookbinding options. So this series here, uh, 
it's the whole Pollard book series. You can find that. I like this. This is hardcover, very durable. I like the print, how it's set up. It's in that one syllable format. This is a reprint that you can find on Amazon. However, it's horrible. <laughs> it's tiny. The print is awful. This is not enjoyable to read. So if you see this reprint on Amazon, don't buy it. See if there's a different one or if you can find this series. Josephine Pollard was born in 1834. And one of the underlying kind of themes and trends that you'll see with all her books is that she really was aware and did not want to kind of talk down to the kids, just writing in this kind of condescending or babyish type of voice. She really uh, challenges kids to rise up to a certain vocabulary level. At the same time, she tries to make it, you know, very easy to read following this one syllable rule. Okay, so here's an example of chapter 25, First in Peace. At the close of the war and of the year 1783, Washington, and it has it here like Washington, went back to Mount Vernon. He reached his home to his great joy on the eve of Christmas Day and was in a good state of mind to keep the feast. Okay, so it's a little excerpt there, and you can see how it breaks down those longer words. So that's a little sample. And remember, this is book number four. Now, a lot of parents, myself included, think that this is still a little bit too much too soon and that maybe this could be better placed at a different point in the book list. I myself like to place it after the Christopher Columbus, Josephine Pollard book, which is book 12. So this would be around 12 or 13, whereas on the list, it's four. Just something to keep in mind. This is also the first book that starts with vocabulary. So. Part of RC is this wonderful vocabulary program, and they begin at book number four. So with each book, there's a set of vocabulary cards. Majority of the words are taken from the actual book, and even the sentences on the back of the vocabulary cards come from the actual book themselves. So this is really great for reading comprehension. They work really well together because if you're just giving a child vocabulary words, it's like a foreign language if they don't hear it being used or in context. So this is their way of hearing it in use and in context is reading the book. So the two just go really well together. So that's book number four. Now moving on, book number five is the McGuffey second reader. And you really see the intensity kind of kick up here with longer stories. So I think a common misconception is that people think, oh, first reader, first grade, second reader, second grade. But no, it's not like that. I would say this is more even third or fourth grade, but my six, seven, eight-year-olds, you know, they can read it just fine, you know, just starting RC this way. Um, they don't know any difference. It's hard to explain. All right, so I'm going to read you one of the lessons from the book here. This is the obedient Casablanca. I know in some other places it's Blanca, but here it's Banca. There was a little boy about 13 years old whose name was Casablanca. His father was the commander of a ship of war called the Orient. The little boy accompanied his father to the seas. His ship was once engaged in a terrible battle on the River Nile. In the middle of the thunders of the battle, while the shots were flying thickly around and strewing the decks with blood, this brave boy stood by the side of his father, faithfully discharging the duties which were assigned to him. At last, his father placed him in a particular part of the ship to perform some service and told him to remain at his post until he should call him away. As the father went to some distant part of the ship to notice the progress of the battle, a ball from the enemy's vessel laid him dead upon the deck. The son, unconscious of his father's death and faithful to the trust reposed in him, remained at his post. Waiting for his father's orders, the battle raged dreadfully around him. The blood of the slain flowed at his feet. The ship took fire and the threatening flames drew near and near. Still, this noble-hearted boy would not disobey his father. In the face of blood and balls and fire, he stood firm and obedient. The sailors began to desert the burning and sinking ship, and the boy cried out, Father, may I go? No voice of permission could come from the mangled body of his lifeless father, and the boy, not knowing that he was dead, would rather die than disobey. There that boy stood at his post until every man had deserted the ship, and he stood and perished in the flames. Oh, what a boy was that! Everybody who had ever heard of him thinks that he was one of the noblest boys that ever was born. Rather than disobey his father, he would die in the flames. This account has been written in poetry, and as the children who read this book may like to see it, I will present it to them. And then it has the actual poem 
of Casablanca. And then it has some discussion questions at the end. What is the story about? Who was Casablanca? By whose side did he stand in the middle of battle? And on and on it goes. So this is book number five. This is, you know, early on, great literature for children. Book number six, now we switch gears again to some really lighthearted, fun kind of animal tales. This is The Tale of Jolly Robin by Arthur Scott Bailey. Now, before I get into uh, the reprints and stuff, I want to tell you a little bit about Arthur Scott Bailey. He was born in 1834. He had various jobs. He graduated from Harvard, helped his father with his store before moving on to New York City and becoming an editor for several publishers. His books were wildly popular at the time, and they were really considered a win-win with educators and their readers because they had this great kind of educational content. He wove in natural history, kind of some topical just science subjects and things like that, and animals, of course. And he wove it in in such a way with really interesting animal stories. And as I'm talking about animals, of course, my lovebirds start chirping. They were quiet this whole time. Maybe it's because I'm talking about the tail of Jolly Robin, which is a bird, of course. So anyways, funny enough, here are two reprints. These are forgotten books. And then this is, I'm not sure, it doesn't say. Forgotten books is a good one. I like the size of the font. This one doesn't have any pictures, which I like because they just use their imagination, which they should. So I like these forgotten books. This, I like the size, it's nice and big. However, I don't like the font. It's kind of one of those special fonts that I'm not a fan of when it comes to reprints to books, but it is out there, super inexpensive. I did have the originals. I remember these are like early 1900s. I mean, I had them and I would give them to the kids to read, the earlier kids, but once they would fold a, a page, it would just break off. I mean, they're very brittle, very old and fragile. I'm even concerned about mold with them. I don't know. So I just am using the reprints now. And they're, they're holding up, you know, pretty well. All my kids have really enjoyed these books. They love these books. They're fun. And again, they're not talking down to them. They're not kind of this dumbed down animal stories. So here's a little example. And what was still worse on Moonlight Nights, Willie sometimes sang his favorite song from sunset to sunrise. What a doleful dilly. What a doleful ditty, said Jolly Robin. I must see this fellow and tell him that he ought to change his tune. But the trouble was that Jolly Robin did not like to roam about at night. He was always too sleepy to do that. My birds. Peaches and sprinkles, you guys like the Jolly Robin tale? Okay, moving on. Book number seven is another Arthur Scott Bailey book. This is The Tale of Solomon Owl. So we continue on with that series. Um, I have a couple different reprints. I can't find the other one. One of my kids must have it. But this is one of them, which I'm not a fan of. I guess it's too small, but it's still readable. It's still okay. Again, these books, I did have the original of this one. And I don't even, I think maybe I finally got rid of it. It was really just falling apart. Now switching gears, book number eight is another Josephine Pollard book. And now we have our hero general U.S. Grant. So again, great balance of it had, a, you know, some fun literature. Now we're moving on to history geography with our hero general U.S. Grant. And this is again by Josephine Pollard. And it's written in that same one syllable format. So it's, a, you know, it's a pretty meaty subject, but it's written in a way where kids can digest it because the sentences, you know, are pretty simple. And if there's any long complex words, it's broken down by syllables. This is another reprint by Forgotten Books. Again, I really like them. They have illustrations here a little bit, and I like it because some of the reprints, the pictures are very blurry. I don't even know why they include them, but this is really well done. So I like the font. Great choice here. Another Josephine Pollard book. So uh, what I find works really best is that you break the book down by chapters, however much you think they can read in one sitting. And so as they finish that section, they can rip off the sticky note. And then the next day they know to just keep reading into the next sticky note. So this really helps because they see visually the end inside. I only got two sticky notes left, you know, um, two reading sessions left or whatever it is. It just really helps to kind of um, see the end in sight, you know. Not saying that they don't love and enjoy these books, but, you know, it's necessary, again, to have this well-balanced literary diet. So for those that have a, this, this is not their favorite, little things like this can really help to just keep it going 
uh, and ease any kind of resistance. But then right after that, book number nine, we go back to another fun book, The Tale of Patty Muskrat. Again, another Arthur Scott Bailey book, The Sleepy Time Tale. So we continue with that. So again, I love that balance. It just really knows how to mix it in, you know, fun and then learning something, knowledge, and then going back to enjoying books. And you're always building vocabulary. The book list is just really excellent. So then we have, here's a reprint. And again, it's that special font, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's not the worst reprint. They can read it. This is what I'm talking about. The pictures are just really blurry and pixelated, but not, not too bad. It's not bad. So here's a little excerpt from The Tale of Patty Muskrat. For some time, Patty Muskrat had not been feeling well. Whenever he swam far, he would have to stop and float on the water in order to catch his breath, and he was not able to swim so fast as he could once. As soon as Mrs. Patty noticed those things, she began to worry, and she said so much that at last Patty agreed to see a doctor. Good, Mrs. Patty exclaimed. You must go over to see Aunt Polly Woodchuck at her house under the hill, and I'll go with you because I can't wait to find out what she says. Whatever your trouble may be, I hope she'll have some herb that will help you out. That will help you out. Okay, so I'm noticing in this reprint that there's some letters missing. Out is O-U, go over to, it's just a T. Again, not all reprints are created equal. Some take the time to go through it and find the mistakes and some not so much. So again, your options are print your own from the RC directly from their files. Number one recommendation there either print and make them bind or do your own little self-publish if you don't want to uh, bind. And then if you're kind of more, you have more money than time, it, you know, that that's a very wise thing someone told me once. Either you have more time than money or money than time. If you're working from home, if you just have more mo uh, money than time, then buying the reprints is a good option. So I want to give you a heads up, which are good reprints and not so great reprints. All right, last but not least, book number 10 is The Bopsy Twins by Laura Lee Hope. Now, this is not a real author, real person. This is a pen name that the company used, so it's several different authors. Now, these books came on the scene around the same time that it was really popular in the country, Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys, which was all about kind of that mystery solving thing. But they didn't want to include any kind of violent crime. So it tried to be a more wholesome kind of mystery solving series. It has to do with two fraternal sets of twins. We have um, Nan and Bert, I had to write this down because I don't remember it. Nan and Bert, 12 years old, and Flossie and Freddie, six years old. Now, the same people that wrote this series also wrote other series, and one of them is The Outdoors Girls, which I really like. So if your girls are kind of tired of all the um, Rover Boys, yeah. There's a lot of Rover Boys books on the list. So if they get a little bit tired of that, you can always switch them out for maybe Outdoors Girls, which is very comparable and around the same time and, and everything, same style. Now, I think this is the only Bobsy Twins book on the RC book list, but there may be more on the additional reading book list. So just to kind of wrap up this video, I'll explain that. Remember that this is going from easy books like this, you know, simple to, heavier books like this. It's a progression. You wouldn't want them to get too fast to maybe books like this, where it could be really challenging. So that is where the extra reading list comes in. No, they're not books that are mandatory that you have to make your children read as well. That's what they're there for. If they're going through these first few books, you know, just super fast, really quickly, but before they get to really difficult, challenging things above their level, use that additional reading list. It's more so along the lines of that really kind of fun, engaging literature, but still at a certain level with the vocabulary and everything like that. So if that's what that reading list is for, the additional reading list is that padding in case they're go going through these first few books really fast before they get to the more challenging books. That's it for this video. If you enjoy this type of content, if you find it helpful or interesting, please make sure you give it a thumbs up so that I know that and comment down below. Comment down below what's your favorite book on the book list or 
what barriers do you have or any hesitation when it comes to the book list that has you maybe still on the fence or you still have doubts on or you have questions on? Leave them down in the comments below. I'd love to talk about it with you. And yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. And make sure you check out that playlist on options as to how to get these books from the files when you buy it to getting them in your students' hands. Again, there's several different options and I have made videos on all of them. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.